Hi, this is Jocelyn, a.k.a. the Pay Skin Lover Lady, and today I'm speaking with Terika Cromarty, um, mom, wife, model, video vixen, and um, former reality star. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. And yourself? I'm doing well. I just want to say thank you for the interview. Um, and you already told me it's no holes bar. It was pretty much we could talk about anything. And because I blogged about you and now your husband, I figured this would be a great opportunity for you to address some of the things that I mentioned that you felt, you know, you know, we, that weren't true. So, first of all, um, let's talk about how you met Cromartie. Um, I actually met Antonio back in 07. I have an um, a entertainment company. It's mm -hmm. TC Rush Movement where I started, and we do a lot of celebrity events. Like I um, did DC uh, Gilbert Arena's 25th birthday, and that's basically mm -hmm. where I started my company. Um, and I just host events and um, produce them, basically. I ask the, the artist or, you know, the athlete or whoever mm -hmm. player is what they want, and that's what we do. So I actually did his birthday party a couple of years back, and that's where I met him. Okay, because you know the rumor was out like he left his ex fiance, you know, and started messing around with you and blah blah blah. As the story goes, you know, now you're and him, y'all are married. So no, that's not true at all. Um, he didn't leave me. Um, I mean, he didn't leave her for me. Um, from my knowledge, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that, and I don't believe that that was the case. I believe that they had their own problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I basically feel that you can't force anybody into marriage, and you know, that was the situation that they had. I mean, from my knowledge, they were supposed to get married, you know, the following year from an engagement. And he realized early on that he didn't want it. And she pushed, you know, it up sooner to try to get things rolling. And it just mm -hmm. didn't work out. They don't have anything to do with me. Um, I have my own life going on, my own things going on. And he wasn't in my life during the time that, yeah. you know, they were together. Yeah. yeah. He made a big splash. I mean, you know... The first time we ever, I guess we got confirmation of your guys' relationship was when he appeared on Candy Girls. So, right. And yeah. then, you know, the typical ex-girlfriend move would be let me contact all the blog sites mm -hmm. and create this story, you know, because mm -hmm. before, you know, we had been seeing each other for a while. There was never anything, nope. you know, in regards mm -hmm. to me and him at all. Mm -hmm. You know, she knew that as well, but, you know. Go ahead and, and make yourself relevant again mm -hmm. by contacting whoever need be and and write a story and create something, you know. Yeah. And that was a, a jab against me. It wasn't against him because he's already been in the public eye negatively or positively or whatever the case may be. So that was directly towards me. And I'm sorry I didn't take him from you. Um, just like my previous relationships didn't work, I'm sorry this one didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. so. Well, let's fast forward to the wedding, which also made, you know, the blog, <laughs> the wedding dance, which, you know, I commented, I thought it was cute, and I thought it was age appropriate. I mean, y'all not old guy, you know, an old man or woman. It was age appropriate. <laughs> and you didn't take too kindly to another blogger, you know, calling your, wed your wedding ghetto. No, I didn't. Um, I actually follow Nicole. I actually, you know listen to a lot of things that she say. My mm -hmm. thing about her is she plays the fence a lot. You know what I mean? If you're going to talk about something, talk about it. But, you know, she, I know a lot about her and how she got her sight and how she was established. And I think a lot of her comments that she say, she should keep them to herself because if I was to blog about you, it would be a different story. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, I, it was a lot of stuff going on yeah. negatively mm -hmm. in the direction of me and my family's life. And I was just like, I know you don't have anything to say because you shouldn't be saying anything at all. You know, mm -hmm. other blog sites had previously said what they wanted to say. And I'm just like, who are you to comment on anything when the majority of the things you do is ghetto? Right. In my opinion. Right. So. Right, because you're right, because that was the same week that the infamous um, HBO Hard Knocks clip aired. Where, did, were you watching it with him that night that it, sh it came on TV? No, TV? actually, they were still in camp. Um, oh. I was at, I was home. I was mm -hmm. in the city. Um, so I was, I, I was there when it filmed, though. We were there that weekend. Um, so just when I saw it, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I felt the same thing the way most viewers felt. I was like, what the hell? Right. But the thing about it is, to me, I felt as if it was a plot, you know what I mean? 
to make it look like he didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. For one, why would you even ask him, you know, to name his kids and his birthday and everything else? Mm -hmm. This has been something that has been on, you know, in uh, in his life since, you know, yep. the first fraternity issue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the day, he has his kids, and they're going to be there. You know what I mean? Why do you keep making it an ongoing issue? Why do you want to know their birthdays? Nobody's going to send them a birthday present. Nobody's going to take care of these kids. So why would you even ask, you know, when are your kids' birthdays, and how do you have this many kids and that? Like, to me, Hard Knocks is to display football. Yeah. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with his personal life and his kids. So mm-hmm. I, I really didn't understand it. You know what I mean? You didn't ask any other athlete on there, Jason Taylor. You know, he has three kids that are within, you know, a year apart of each other. You didn't ask him, when, mm-hmm. how old are your kids, when their birthdays? You know what I mean? Like, why would you ask him? But, Terrica, you, I mean, having filmed a reality show, you know it's all about the drama. They want to, they take what they see in the headlines or um, off of Twitter, and they, they, you know, build it into the storyline. Why didn't he just say no? Why didn't he just deny to answer that question? So before we were rudely interrupted, I was asking you, um, why didn't um, Antonio just deny to answer the, that question that they asked him on Hard Knocks about the kids? So the thing with Antonio is he doesn't he doesn't ever want anybody to feel as if you know that he's not going to claim his kids or it's not a problem to him. Like his whole um, thing is my kids are my kids. I'm not ashamed of my kids. Mm-hmm. If somebody asks me about my kids, I'm going to tell them about my kids. But I've tried to explain to him like you have to understand sometime that, you know, people, and and that's why I get so mad, because, you know, people don't know the man who I married. People go off of a mistake that he made, you know what I mean, and he can't live past that. Like, if he wasn't taking care of his kids, then yeah, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Then talk about him, but, you know what I mean, give him a chance to even prove, you know, that he's grown beyond his adolescent years and coming into the league and not really knowing you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How to be a man and re- take care of responsibility. But well, I think his whole thing is like, I mean, they're my kids. They're my kids. Somebody asked me about my kids. I'll tell them about my kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, at the end of the day, if you, with your career, talk your career, your family, leave your family at home. And that's all it should be. The, the bigger picture is he's a ball player. He really doesn't have to address any of it. He really doesn't, mm-hmm. you know? And he does all the time. Anytime anybody asks him about it, but he never wants his kids or, or anybody else to ever feel as if that they're not wanted mm-hmm. or, you know, like Antonio will never tell you, this. he'll always say, you know, I made bad decisions, but he'll never say that his kids were a mistake. He mm-hmm. never wants his kids to be raised to believe that, you know, oh, you were just a mistake. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He wants them to live their life with purpose. So Anytime anybody asks him about his kids, he's going to, you know, acknowledge his kids, regardless mm-hmm. of what anybody has to say. Yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I tell him sometimes, too, you have to understand your kids are going to grow up and the things that people are saying about them, which yep. a lot of times is coming from the mothers. There's a lot of athletes, you know, who have, you know, numerous kids yep. by numerous different women. But if it wasn't for the mothers going on and, and trying to create drama, then there wouldn't be any drama. I agree. I agree. After actually, after that clip aired, um, it became a game to name the athlete that had the most children. Right. I mean, and you know, people were naming him. So he is not alone in that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, because the Jets are being put at this higher platform right now, right, right, he was just right. an easy target. 